Well, and welcome to this CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE here in Palo Alto, California. We got two great remote guests to talk about some big news hitting with Scality and Eula Packard Enterprise, Jerome Lacat, CEO of Scality, and Chris Tinker, distinguished technologist from HPE, Eula Packard Enterprise, Jerome, Chris, great to see you. Both CUBE alumni from an original gangster days, as we say, back in when we started almost 11 years ago. Great to see you both. Uh, it's great to be back. So, Good to see you, John. So really compelling news around kind of this next generation storage, uh, cloud native solution. Okay, it's, a, it's really kind of an impact on the next gen, I call next gen DevOps meets uh, application, modern application world. And some we've been covering heavily. Uh, there's some big news here around Scality and HPE offering a pretty amazing product. You guys introduced essentially the next gen piece of it. Uh, Artesca, we'll get into in a second, but this is a game changing announcement you guys announced. This is an evolution continuing. I think it's more of a revolution, but I think you know storage is kind of abstraction of evolution to this app centric world. So talk about this environment we're in and we'll get to the announcement, which is uh, object store for modern workloads. But this whole shift is happening, Jerome. This is uh, a game changer to storage and yeah. how customers are going to be deploying workloads. Yeah, Skeleti really, uh, I mean, I personally really started working on Skeleti um, more than 10 years ago, close to 15 now. And if we think about it, I mean, the cloud has really revolutionized IT. And within the cloud, we really see layers and layers of technology. I mean, it all started around 2006 with uh, Amazon and Google and Facebook finding ways to do Initially, what was consumer IT at very large scale, very low cost, credible reliability. And then slowly it creeped into the enterprise. And at the very beginning, I would say that everyone was uh, kind of wizards trying new things and, and really coupling technologies together. Uh, and to some degree, we were some of the first wizards uh, doing this. Uh, but we, we're now close to 15 years later, and there's a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience, a lot of Tools. And this is really a new generation, I'll call it cloud native, you can call it next gen, whatever. But there is now enough experience in the world, uh, both at the development level and at the infrastructure level, to deliver truly distributed automated systems that run on industry standard servers. Obviously, good quality server deliver a better service than to servers, um, but there is now enough knowledge for this to truly go at scale. And call this cloud or call this cloud native, really the core concept here is to deliver scalable IT at very low cost, very high level of reliability, all based on software. And we've, we've been participated in this solution, but we feel that now the breadth of what's coming is at the new level. And it was time for us to think, develop, and launch a new product that's specifically adapted to that. And, and Chris, I will let you comment on this because you have customers or some of them, you, you can add a customer view to that. Well, you know, you're right. You know, I've been in the, uh, I've been like you, I've been in this industry for, uh, well, a little bit a long time, a little long in the tooth, 20, 21 years just with HPE and engineering. And look at the actual landscape has changed with how we're doing scale out software defined storage for particular workloads and where a, a, a catalyst has, has evolved here is in analytics. Uh, normally what was only done in the three letter acronym then massively scale out POSIX namespace file systems, parallel file systems. The application space has encroached into the enterprise world where the enterprise world needed a way to actually take a look at how do, how do I simplify the operations? How do I actually be able to bring about an application that can run in the public cloud or on premise or hybrid, be able to actually look at a, a, a workload optimized stat that aligns the actual cost to the actual analytics that I'm going to be doing, the workload that I'm going to be doing, and be able to bridge those gaps and be able to you know spin this up and simplify operations. And you know, and if you if you are familiar with the East Parallel File System, which by the way we we actually have on our our truck, uh, I, I I I do engineer those, but they are they are, um, they are, they have their own unique challenges. But in the world of enterprise, where customers are looking to simplify operations and take advantage of new application analytic workloads, whether it be Spark, 
Mesa, whatever it might be, right? I mean, if I want to spin up a MongoDB or maybe maybe uh, an Elasticsearch capability, how do I actually take those technologies and embrace a modern scale out storage stack that without without breaking the bank, but also provide an, a simple operations? And that's that's why we look for uh, object storage capabilities because it brings us this massive parallelization. Back to you guys. Well, before we get into the product, I want to just touch on one thing, Jerome. You mentioned and Chris, you you brought up the DevOps piece, next gen, mm. next level, whatever term you use, it is cloud native. Cloud native has proven that DevOps, infrastructure as code, is not only legit, it's being operationalized in all enterprises. Add security in there, you have DevSecOps. This is the reality. And hybrid cloud in particular has been pretty much the consensus is that standard. So, or de facto standard, whatever you want to call it. That's happening, sure. multi-cloud are on the horizon. So these new workloads are have these new architectural changes, cloud, on-premises and edge. This is the number one story and the number one challenge all enterprises are now working on. How do I build the architecture for the cloud, on-premises and edge? This is yeah. forcing the DevOps team to flex and build new apps. Can you guys talk about that particular trend and is, it, and is that relevant here? Yeah, I, I now talk about uh, really storage anywhere and cloud anywhere. And, and really the key concept is edge to go to cloud. I mean, we all understand now that the edge uh, will host a lot of data and the edge is many different things. I mean, it, it's obviously a, a smartphone, whatever that is, but it's also factories, it's also production, it's also you know moving uh, moving machinery, uh, trains, planes, satellites. Um, that that's all the edge cars, obviously, uh, and a lot of data will be both produced and uh, processed there. But from the edge, you will want to be able to send the data uh, for analysis, for backup, for logging to a core, and that core could be. Regional, maybe not you know one call for the whole planet, but maybe one call per region, um, per state in the U.S. Uh, and then from there, you will also want to uh, push some of the data to public cloud. Uh, one of the things that we see more and more is that the DR, the DR data center, the disaster recovery, is not another physical data center. It's actually the cloud, and that's a very efficient infrastructure, very cost efficient, especially. So really. It, the, it, it's changing the paradigm on how you think about storage because you really need to integrate these three layers in a consistent approach, especially around the topic of security because you want the data to be secure all along the way. And, and data is not just data, it's data and who can access the data, who can modify the data. What are the conditions that allow modification or automatic erasure of the data? In some cases, it's super important that the data be automatically erased after 10 years. And all this needs to be transported from edge to call to cloud. So that, that's one of the aspects. Um, another aspect that resonates for me with what you said is a word you didn't say, but is actually crucial to this whole uh, revolution. It's Kubernetes. I mean, Kubernetes is now a mature technology and it's it's just, you know, the next level of automatized operation for distributed system, uh, which we didn't have five or 10 years ago. And that is so powerful that it's going to allow application developers to develop much faster system that can be distributed again, edge to go to cloud because it's going to be an underlying technology that spans the three layers. Chris, your thoughts, hybrid cloud. I've been, I've been having conversations with the HPE folks for God, years and years on hybrid clouds. Now here. Right. <laughs> Well, you know, and, and, and it is, it's an exciting in, in, uh, layout, right? So if you look at like a, whether it be enterprise virtualization, uh, that is the scale out general purpose virtualization workloads, whether it be analytic workloads, uh, whether it be, you know, data protection is a paramount to all of this. Orchestration is paramount. Uh, if you look at the DevSecOps, absolutely. I mean, securing the actual data, the digital asset is, is absolutely paramount. And if you look at how we do this, look at the investments we're making. Uh, we're making, I know if you look at the, the collaborative platform development, which goes to our partnership with Scality, it is, we're providing them an integral uh, aspect of everything we do, uh, whether we're bringing Esmeral, which is our, our software BU's orchestration. Look at the veneer of its control plane controlling Kubernetes, being able to actually control the actual Kubernetes clusters and the actual backing store for all the analytics that we just talked about, whether it be a web scale app that is traditionally using a POSIX namespace has now been 
modernized to take advantage of newer technologies, running in NVMe burst buffers or 100 gig networks with slingshot network at 200 and 400 gigabit, looking at how do we actually uh, get the actual analytics, the workload to the CPU and have it attached to the data at, at rest. Where's the data? How do we land the data and how do we actually align uh, essentially locality, locality of the actual asset to the compute? This is where you know we can look leverage uh, whether it be Azure or Google or name your favorite hybrid uh, hyperscaler. Leverage those technologies, leveraging the actual persistent store. And this is where uh, Scality is with, with this object store capability has been a, an, an industry trendsetter, uh, setting the actual landscape of how to provide an object store on premise and hybrid cloud, run it in a public cloud, but be able to f facilitate data mobility and tie it back to an, tie it back to an application. And this is where a lot of things have changed in the world of, uh, of analytics because the applications, the, the uh, newer technologies that are coming on the market have taken advantage of this particular protocol, S3, so they can do web scale, massively parallel concurrent workloads. You know, uh, let's get into the announcement. I love cool and relevant products. And I think this hits the mark. Uh, Scality, you guys have Arteska, which is, um, just announced, and I think it, you know, we obviously we reported on it. You guys have a lightweight, true enterprise grade object store software for Kubernetes. This is the announcement. Jerome, tell us about it. What's yeah, the we, big deal? We, cool and relevant. Uh, Come on, this is cool, right? Tell us. I'm, I'm super excited. I'm, I'm not sure that you can see it as we're on screen, but I'm super, super excited. You know, we, we introduced the ring uh, 11 years ago. And this is our biggest announcements for the past 11 years. So yes, do pay attention. Um, and uh, you know, after after looking at uh, at all these trends and understanding where we see the future going, uh, we decided that it was time to embark it. So there's not one line of code that's the same as our uh, previous generation product. Um, they will both coexist. They both have a space in the market. Uh, and Arteska was specifically this, uh, designed for this uh, cloud native era. And what we see is that people want something that's lightweight, especially because it had to go to the edge. Um, they still want the enterprise grade that Scality is known for, and it has to be modern. What we really mean by modern is uh, uh, we see object storage now being the primary storage for many applications, more and more applications. And so we had to be able to deliver the performance that primary storage expects. Um, this idea of uh, Scality serving primary storage is actually not completely new. Uh, when we launched Scality 10 years ago, the first application that we were supporting was consumer email for which we were, and we are still today, uh, the primary storage. So we have, we know what it is to be the primary store. We know what's the level of reliability you need to hit. We know what's, what latency means, and latency is different from throughput, and you really need to optimize both. Um, and I think that still today, we're the only object storage company that protects that after both replication and erasure coding, because we understand that Replication is faster, but erasure coding is better and more economical than a larger file where fast in terms of latency doesn't matter so much. So we, we've been bringing all that experience, but really rethinking a product for that new generation that really is here now. And um, so we're, we're truly excited. Uh, I can speak a little bit more about the product. It's a software, Wiscality is a software company, and that's why we love to partner uh, with HPE, who's producing amazing servers, um, you know, for the record and history, the very first deployment of Scality in 2010 was on the HP servers. So this is a, a long love story here. Yeah. Um, and uh, so to come back to Arteska, uh, it's lightweight in the sense that it's easy to use. Uh, we can start small, we can start from just one server or one, one VM instance. I mean, it starts really small, but it can grow infinitely. Uh, the fact that we start small, we didn't you know, limit the technology because of that. Uh, so you can start from one to many. Um, and uh, it's cloud native in the sense that it's completely Kubernetes compatible, it's Kubernetes orchestrated. Uh, it will deploy on many uh, Kubernetes distributions. Uh, we're talking obviously with Esmeral, we're also talking with Tanzu and with the others in terms of uh, uh, Kubernetes distribution. It will also be able to be run in the cloud. Now, I'm not sure that there will be many uh, true uh, production deployment of Arteska in the cloud because you already have really good object storage uh, by the cloud providers. But when you are developing something and you want to test dev, 
Um, you know, just doing it in the cloud is very practical. So you'll be able to deploy a, a test scale on a Kubernetes cloud distribution. And it's modern object storage in the sense that it's application centric. A lot of our work is actually validating that our storage is fit for a single purpose application and making sure that we understand the requirement of these applications that we can guide our customers on how to deploy. And it's really designed to be the primary storage for these new workloads. The big part of the news is your relationship with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. There's some exclusivity here uh, as part of this announcement. You mentioned the relationship goes back many, many years. We've covered uh, your relationship in the past. Uh, Chris, obviously, you know, we cover HP like a blanket. Um, <laughs> this is big news for HPE as yeah, well. Big news. What is the relationship? Talk about this exclusivity. Could you share uh, about the partnership and the exclusivity piece? Well, the, the partnership expands into the pan HPE portfolio. We, we look, we made a massive investment in edge IoT devices. Uh, so we actually have, uh, how do we align the cost to the demand? For our customers to come to, to us wanting to look at, uh, think about what we're doing with GreenLake and consumption-based modeling. They want to build a, be able to consume the asset without having to do a capital outlay out of the gate. Uh, number two, look at, you know, how do you deploy technology? It really demands, the, the, it, it depends on the scale, right? So in a lot of your web scale, you know, scale out technologies, uh, it, putting them on a diet is challenging, uh, meaning how skinny can you get it? Uh, getting it down into the 50 terabyte range. And then the complexities of those technologies at, as you take a day one implementation and scale it out over, you know, uh, you know, multiple iterations over quarters, the growth becomes a challenge. So working with Scality, we, we believe we've actually cracked this nut. Uh, we figured out how to, A, number one, how to start small, but not limit a customer's ability to scale it out incrementally or grotesquely. Grotesquely, you could, you, depending on the quarters, the months, whatever, whatever the workload is, how do you actually align and be able to consume it? Uh, so now, whether it be on our edge line products, our DL products, go back there. You now, what uh, Jerome was talking about earlier, you know, we, we, we ship a server every few seconds. <laughs> that won't be a problem. But then, of course, into our density optimized compute with the Apollo products. Uh, and this is where uh, you know, uh, our two companies have worked in, in an exclusivity where the, the scaly software runs on the HP ecosystem. Uh, and then we can, of course, provide you, uh, the, our customers the ability to consume that through our GreenLink financial models or through a CapEx purchase. Awesome, so Jerome and, and Chris, who's the customer here? Obviously, there's an exclusive period. Talk about the target customer and how do customers get the product? How do we get the software? And how does this exclusivity with HP fit into it? Yeah, uh, so there, there's really uh, three types of customers and we've really, uh, we've worked a lot with uh, a company called Use Design to optimize the user interface for each of the three types of customers. So we really thought about each uh, com uh, customer role and providing with each of them the best product. Uh, so the, the first type of customer are application owners who are deploying an application that requires an object storage in the backend. They typically want a simple object store for one application. They want it to be simple and work. I mean, honestly, they want no frill. They just want an object store that works. And they want to be able to start as small as they start with their application. Often it's, you know, the first deployment may be a small deployment. Um, you know, applications like uh, backup, like uh, Vim or Rubrik or uh, analytics like Stonk or Vertica or uh, file system that now now available as a software uh, you know, like Citera does a really great departmental NAS uh, that works very well, that needs an object store in the back end of uh, high performance computing, a uh, Weka file system and is an amazing file system. Um, we, we also have vertical application like Broadpeak, for example, uh, who provides um, origin and, and VOD uh, software for broadcasters. Uh, so all these applications, they request an object store in the back end and you just need a, a simple high performance working well, object store and artist is perfect for that. The, the second type of um, um, people that we think will be interested by artist are essentially developers who are currently developing some Kubernetes or cloud native application, your next gen. Um, and as part of the development stack, um, it's getting better and better when you're developing a cloud native application to really target an object storage rather than NFS as your persistent layer. It just, you know, think about generations of technologies and um, NFS and file system were great 25 years ago. I mean, it, it's an amazing technology. 
now when you want to develop a distributed scalable application, object store is a better fit because it's the same generation. And so same thing, I mean, you know, they're developing something, they need uh, an object store that they can develop on. So they want it very lightweight, but they also want a product that their enterprise or their customers will be able to rely on for years and years on. And this guy's a really great fit for that. Um, the third type of customer are more um, uh, architects, I would say IT architects, that are designing a distributed edge system where they're going to have 50 factories, a thousand planes, a million cars. They're going to have some local storage which will they want to replicate to the core and possibly also to the cloud. And uh, as they design these really new generation workloads that are incredibly distributed, but with local storage, uh, Autisca is a really great fit for that. And talk about the HP exclusive, uh, Chris, what's the, uh, how does that fit in? Do they buy through Scality? Can they get it for the HP? Are you guys working together on how customers can procure? Both ways. Yeah, both ways. They, they can procure it through Scality. They can procure it through HPE. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's the software stack running on our density optimized compute platforms. Uh, which you would choose and align those and to provide an enterprise quality because if it comes back to it in all of these use cases, it's how do we align up to a true enterprise stack, um, bringing about multi-tenancy, bringing about the, 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 the fact that, you know, if you look at like a local eraser coding, uh, one of the things that they're bringing to it so that we can get down into the DL325. So with the exclusivity, uh, you actually get choice and with that choice comes into our entire portfolio, whether it be the edge line platform, the DL325 AMD processing stack or the Intel DL380s or whether, whether it be the Apollos or uh, like I said, there's, there's, there's so many ample choices there that facilitate this. And it just allows us to align those two strategies. Awesome. And I think the yeah. Kubernetes piece is really relevant because you know, I've been yeah. interviewing folks, practitioners um, and Kubernetes is very much maturing fast. It's definitely the centerpiece of the cloud native, both below the the line, if you will, under the hood for the for the infrastructure, and then for apps, um, they want to program on top of it. That's critical. I mean, Jeremy, this is like this is the future. Yeah, well, no, I'd like to, and if you don't mind, I'd like to come back for a minute on the uh, exclusive with HP. So we did a six month exclusive, and the very reason we could do this is because HP has such such breadth of server portfolio, and so we can go from you know. Really simple, very cheap, uh, you know, HDD on DL380. I mean, it's a machine that retails for, I think, $40. I mean, it, it's really like simple system, 50 terabyte. Uh, we can have the DL325 that uh, Chris mentioned. There is really a powerhouse, uh, all NVMe uh, uh, flash, uh, all the storage is NVMe, uh, very fast processors, or, uh, you know, dense large, uh, large system like the Apollo 4500. So it's a very large breadth of portfolio. Uh, we support the whole portfolio and we work together on this. So I, I want to say that, you know, one of the reasons uh, and I want to send kudos to HP for, for the breadth of the server line really. <clears throat> As mentioned, um, Autesca can be ordered from either company uh, in, hand in hand together. So anyway, you'll see both of us uh, and our, our field is working incredibly well together. Well, just on that yeah. point, I think just for clarification, uh, but was this co-design by Scality and HPE? Because Chris, you mentioned um, you know the, the configuration of your systems. Can you guys, Chris, quickly talk about the the design? So co-design from a, from a, from the code base, the software is entirely designed and developed by Scality. Mm -hmm. uh, from uh, a testing and performance and server, this really was a joint work with. Uh, HP providing both uh, hardware and manpower so that we could accelerate the testing phase. You know, Chris, HPE has just been doing such a great job of really focused on this. I know I've been covering it for years before it was fashionable. <laughs> the idea of apps working no matter where it lives, public cloud data center or edge, and you mentioned edge yeah. lines, been around for a while. You know, app centric, developer friendly, cloud first has been an HPE kind of guiding first principle for many, many years. Well, it has, and you know, if, you know, as our our CEO Antonio Neri has stated, by 2022, uh, everything will be able to be consumed as a service in our portfolio, uh, and then this stack allows us the simplicity and the consumability of the technology and the granulation of it allows us to simplify the installation, simplify the actual deployment, uh, bring it into a cloud ecosystem, but more importantly for the end customer, 
they simply get an enterprise quality product running on a density optimized stack that they can consume through a orchestrated simplistic interface. Uh, that's, that's the customer, that's what they're wanting for today is where they come to me and ask, hey, how do I need a, a, a I've got this new app, new project. And you know, it goes back to who's actually coming. It's no longer the IT people who are actually coming to us. It's the, the lines of business. It's, the, it's the, the, that entire dimension of uh, business owners coming to us going, this is my challenge and how can you, HPE, help us? And we rely on our breadth of technology, but also our breadth of partners to come together in our, and, and of course, scale is, is hand in hand in our collaborative business unit, our collaborative storage product engineering group that actually brought, brought this to market. So we're very excited about this solution. Chris, thanks for that uh, input and great insight. Jerome, congratulations on a great partnership with HPE, obviously um, great joint customer base. Congratulations on the product release here, a big moving the ball down the field, as they say, new functionality, cloud, cloud native, object store, phenomenal. Um, so wrap, wrap, wrap up the interview. Tell us your vision for Scality and the future of storage. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll start. I mean, Scality is going to be an amazing lead. He's already. Um, but um, yeah, so, you know, I have three themes that I think will govern how storage is going. And obviously, um, Mark Andres had said it, software is everywhere and software is eating the world. So definitely that's going to be true in the data center and storage in particular. Uh, but the, the three trends that are more specific are, first of all, uh, I think that uh, security, performance, and agility is now basic expectation. It's, it's not, an, you know, it's not like an additional feature. It's just the basic table state. Security, performance, and agility. Um, the second thing is, and we've talked about it during this conversation, is edge to core. You need to think your platform with edge core and cloud. You know, you, you don't want to have separate systems, separate design, uh, interface point for edge, and then think about core, and then think about cloud, and then think about the diverse cloud. All this needs to be integrated in a design. And the third thing that I see as a major trend for the next 10 years is data sovereignty. Uh, more and more, uh, you need to think about where is the data residing? What are the legal challenges? What is the level of protection against who are you protected? What, what is your independence uh, strategy? How, how do you keep as a company being independent from the people you need to be independent? And um, I mean, I say companies, but this is also true for public services. So these, these for me are the three big trends. And uh, I do believe that uh, software defined distributed architecture are necessary for these trends, but you also need to think about being truly enterprise grade, and that has been one of our focus with the design of our test car. How do we combine a lightweight product with all of the security requirements and data sovereignty requirements that we expect to have in the next 10 years? That's awesome. Congratulations on the news, Scality, Artesca, the big release with HPE exclusive. Um, for six months, Chris Tinker, distinguished engineer at HPE. Great to see you. Jerome Lecat, CEO of Scality. Great to see you as well. Congratulations on the big news. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Thanks for watching.